Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. In today's video, I am continuing my trend of doing first. And today's video is the first time I'm doing a video that is completely inspired by another YouTuber. When I was scrolling through and I saw this picture of this project done by Modern Makeovers, I was like, oh my God, that is gorgeous. It fits my style well. It would fit into my house well. So I knew I wanted to dupe it. So much love to him and shout out to him for making such a beautiful piece. And I'm going to be duping it today. This is going to be an Ikea hack. And I'm hoping this will solve my shoe storage solution that I'm having in my foyer because it is just a hot mess. Every time I come in, I'm taking shoes off. When I'm going out, I'm putting shoes on. So I like to keep them right by the door, but it just gets muddy. I have the foot traffic, the dog traffic, and I'm just trying to make sure that my house stays clean and organized looking. So I've been wanting a shoe solution for a while. And I finally think that I found something that I can benefit from both with beauty by hacking his project and also functionality by getting those shoes up off the floor and out of the way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and let's hop right on into the flip. Here's today's piece and I got this off Marketplace for 40 bucks, which I thought was a good deal. I'm glad I bargained with her though to lower the price because look at all this water damage. She made sure to take her pictures from far enough away where none of this was visible. So I kind of got scammed, but I knew I could fix it. So I went ahead and got it because this piece retails for $180. And I'm at a point where I'm desperately needing somewhere to put all my shoes. Look, I got so excited. I just brought this straight in and put all my shoes inside of it. But after a few days, I got tired of looking at it because it's white and that doesn't match anything in my house. So we're going to go ahead and start flipping this. The key to fixing bubbled or swollen particle board is to make sure that you use a high grit sandpaper. Have a lot of patience. Keep your sander moving because if you stay in one place for too long, you're going to get way down too deep into the particle board where it's more fibrous than this top layer. And that just creates a big problem that nobody really wants to deal with. I'm very much taking my time with this step and my only way that I have to check this is just to rub it with my hand and see if it feels flat to me. You might have noticed in previous clips this little section that I cut out. I didn't want to remove my baseboards and all that jazz to get this to fit in the spot where it's going to live. So I just cut this out so that it will fit as is. But I am going to clean the area up because my cuts were a little bit too big as you can see. So I'm just going in with some wood filler and cleaning up my cuts. At this point I've been working on this for a few hours already and I still have a lot more sanding to do. So when I'm stressing take your time when you are dealing with particle board and sanding. I'm really meaning take your time. In total I probably spent about 5 hours sanding this whole thing between sanding the particle board smooth and scuff sanding the entire piece. Here's how the front looked once all my corrective sanding and my scuff sanding was complete. And here's how the side looked once all that sanding was complete. There was also a ton of water damage on the top, so here is how that looked once I was done sanding it. Now that I am finally done sanding, I want to remove these little handles that they have on here. So I'm just knocking them off with a screwdriver and a hammer. Now I need to fill in these voided areas. So I'm just making a template using some scrap one by twos that I have on hand. I traced the shape of the void area and then I cut it out on my miter saw. And a miter saw does not cut rounded edges. So I had to make them round using sandpaper. Here I'm just dry fitting my pieces to make sure that they fit nicely. I tapped them a couple times just to make sure that they would really fit nicely. And then after I made sure, I removed it, I glued it, and then I clamped it into place. I only have two clamps, so I had to do this in sections. The first two drawers worked out great. And then when I got to this third one, it was kind of a problem child. So that's the one that I'm kind of showing you right now. As soon as I hit it with the hammer to dry fit it, it cracked. So you can see a crack going through the middle of it, but I decided I could still use it. I think maybe it was a little too big, so I'm just making everything level at this point. After hacking at it, it was just getting worse and worse, so I decided to just leave it at this point. In hindsight, I should have just cut another piece. You can see how nice 
and neat the other drawers turned out. I did have to do a little bit of leveling on those, but not nearly as much work as that problem child gave me. Now I'm going to go in with a few layers of wood filler and just try to make these areas look nice and seamless. I think quick wood would have been a better solution for this problem child one, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just decided to do a couple of layers of what I do have, which is wood filler. When you do a thick layer of wood filler, it takes a while to dry all the way down. So I'm just gonna do a layer and leave it, do another layer and leave it. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on my next step, which will be to cut and add more feet. As you can see, this piece only has two. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be affixed to the wall. That's why there's only two feet, but I don't wanna do that. I want it to be freestanding. So I'm gonna trace out and cut some additional feet. To make new legs, I simply traced the existing leg on a piece of paper and put that piece of paper over top of my wood that I was going to be cutting. And I bared down hard enough to see where the pencil left an indent and I just cut that out on my miter saw. That method worked out really well. As you can see, mine is just slightly smaller than the originals, but that's okay because they're going to be in the back hidden anyway. I just really need them for stability. I decided to remove these little side pieces because I don't think they were serving much of a purpose and they were in the way of where I wanted the foot to go. Next I put some wood glue on my foot and then I put it into position and clamped it where I wanted it to be. Here's how it looked when both feet were clamped. I decided to go ahead and let the glue dry before adding screws later. I'm always very skeptical about screwing it to MDF or a particle board. I went back and added some more layers of wood filler where I thought it was necessary. And then after I got it smooth enough, I went ahead and sanded it. I'm still using 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just taking this really slow and making sure that I am as thorough as I can be. And I'm still just using my hand as the gauge to see where I need to continue sanding or where I need to add more wood filler. I did several layers of wood filler sanding, wood filler sanding until I felt like it was as good as I was going to be able to get it. And when I got to that point, I decided to use joint compound as my final layer just because I find it thinner than wood filler and easier to sand. While I waited for that joint compound to dry, I went ahead and added screws into my feet because that wood glue is dry now. All right, so I'm done sanding two of them. That's about as flat as I'm gonna be able to make it. And this one is two. Looks pretty good. But then I've got this one that needs a little bit more time to dry. So I'm going to just proceed with what I have already completed. I've got this door completed, this door completed, and then, of course, this part is completed. There's Dawn and warm water in my bucket, so I'm just going to clean everything except that one problem child drawer. So I drew out some potential designs. I crossed this one out right away. Um, between these two, I'm going to cut pieces for this one. I tend to be more is more, so I'm going to do that one. So now I'm just cutting up some one by twos on my miter saw. I have a lot of scrap wood that I've been using up, but I did need one more piece of one by two. So here I am making my first ever one by two on my table saw. I told y'all in my last video, I'm going to get better with these tools. So I'm just trying to make sure I incorporate different ways to use them so I can get more comfortable with them, particularly this table saw. It went to plan, so I was very excited about that. Here are all the one by twos that I cut. 
I started priming and I immediately hated the way that the primer was laying over top of the particle board areas. However, I kept priming anyway because sometimes you can't see areas that you need to touch up until you get a layer of primer or paint on them. So I wanted to go ahead and finish priming and then see what I needed to readjust. As you can see, it's not looking too hot up close. So I went ahead and watered down some of my wood filler and I'm just using that as like a skim coat over top of the particle board areas. As you've probably guessed, there will be more sanding, but I went ahead and applied a light layer of that over all of the areas that had particle board, and then I moved on to sanding down the pieces of 1x2 that I cut. When you're buying lumber, it's definitely cheaper to buy pieces that are not sanded and just sand them yourself, so that's what I'm doing here. Now that those are all sanded and looking great, I'm going to go ahead and with this English chestnut stain. This is the same color as the floors in my house, so I decided it would be fitting. And I'm just going to use, I have a glove and a sock over that, and I'm using that to stain these pieces up. Initially, I was planning on doing two coats, but I kind of like how these look, so I'm just going to leave them just like that. After that scam coat of wood filler dried out, I did go ahead and sand it. I'm sure you don't want to see me do any more sanding. So I'm just going to skip that part and go right on to priming, which is what I'm doing now. And I did end up doing two coats of primer. And as always, I'm using the Ben Shellac Base Primer. That skim coat made a huge difference. Everything turned out really flat and nicely, so that worked out perfectly. Now I'm just going in with two coats of Coal Black by Fusion. In case you're curious, I'm spraying using the Wagner Flexio 3500, and this machine has definitely been a game changer when it comes to my flips. I save a lot of time because I don't have to worry about brush strokes or sanding in between coats or any of that. This really does lay down paint nicely. Also, I bought two nozzles, which means I can have one for priming, one for painting, and that I don't have to clean out anything in between coats. So it has just really saved me a ton of time. Utilizing time-saving measures such as buying two nozzles for my sprayer have definitely helped me to be able to post consistently on this channel. That has been my goal for 2024. So far, I'm doing good. I'm uploading every Sunday like I want to. So I'm doing my very best to hold up my end of the bargain. And now it's on you guys to subscribe to my channel, engage with my videos, which really helps YouTube's algorithm. And it will push my videos out to people who don't know about my channel. I typically respond to every comment, but if you're feeling a little shy, you don't have to put words. You can just put a thumbs up, a smiley face, anything that you comment will help me. Or you can just thumbs up the video, which will also help me. So please make sure you're subscribed and engage with me on my videos. Thank you so much. Here's how everything looked all painted up and reinstalled. Then I took measurements to determine where my wood pieces should go. You can't see them, but there are little pencil marks where I thought each piece was supposed to go. I started to nail this piece in and then I stepped back to take a look at it and I realized that something was off with my measurements. Luckily, I had not put too many nails in when I realized this and I was able just to pop it off with a little bit of elbow grease. Then I was able to readjust my measurements and proceed with putting my wooden pieces on. So I just aligned them to where my mark said that they should be. I put one nail in the top just to make sure it was secure while I was leveling it and then I nailed the bottom and then I just did a couple in between each piece as well. After those were secure I went ahead and cut the empty spaces in between each drawer so that the doors will open properly. I didn't want to go through the trouble of top coating so I opted for a furniture salve instead. Now that everything is all waxed, here are some final images of the finished product. Feel free to let me know how you think this project turned out in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen or in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next clip.